And welcome back to the Off the Clock Show. You are joined with myself, Sean Gervais from Orbis X, as well as Marty, Mr. Marshall Hill from the Pints and Polishing Podcast and Hyper Clean Car Care Products. And we are doing a earlier episode than normal, but we're going to enjoy ourselves still. Hey, we'll be <laughs> so, off the clock when we're not even on the clock yet. How about that? Yeah, exactly. Not even <laughs> on the clock yet, but we're off the clock. <laughs> we're on the other end of the clock. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. I guess I got my mug that's like falling apart. It's, <laughs> it's a little too much time in the dishwasher, but uh, yeah, I got my coffee with, uh, I think, I think it's a Brazilian coffee, they call it actually, but I got a little bit of rum with some coffee. All right, I, I heard rum and coffee. I, I poured a little Tito's, little Tito's and coffee. Rum would have probably been better, but I don't know. Captain with a little spicy rum to it and coffee. I was like, eh, I'll pass. oh yeah, yeah. No, see me, I don't do the spice, so that's where it's mm-hmm. just uh, like the raw flavoring. You, but actually, has it ever been a thing? Like, do you ever regularly drink like liqueurs or vodka or something or rum for you in coffee? Is that a thing? Uh, not regularly. No, like once in a while I'll do it. Um, usually if I'm on vacation, something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, not too much. To be honest, I actually like the taste of coffee. Like for, uh, my coffee now I I put cream in it now sometimes. Um, just, but for a long period of time, I was drinking just my coffee black and I just like the taste of it. Um, don't so say Folgers. don't say Folgers. Don't no, say no, 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 no. Don't say Folgers. Don't say Folgers. <laughs> Definitely not Folgers. No, I, I, I always do have Folgers on though, just in case I, we have people come over. Just, <laughs> but I, I, you know, if I have to make a big pot of something like that, but uh, most times I, I do get the beans. I like to grind them up. And I just, I like to do that. Um, tastes better, and you can make it, you know, when you want it, kind of thing. But lately, I've been getting into these pods. Uh, so right now I'm actually drinking a Tim Hortons pod uh, that we had, and this one is their dark roast, which is it's it's pretty good. I don't know Tim Hortons is a big deal here; a lot of people like it. Um, but I, I don't know when it comes to coffee, I, I'm kind of weird. I like to try these like independent brand type things, and so I always just go for something random. Uh, there's one here that we have; it's called Kicking Horse. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I don't know. It's but it's pretty good. Really strong coffee though, but it's it's good. Me, I like strong coffee though. I like that jolt, you know, just, uh, let's go, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah. yeah, I don't like I don't like weak shit either. Yeah, yeah, yeah I need I, something that's I, I like the the hard, like dirty. I, I like Starbucks. People say, you know, ah, it tastes mm. like burnt. Like I like that flavor sometimes, but I mm. like it mixed with the sweetness, right? So I'll mm. take like if I'm gonna go through Starbucks, I'll get a, a double, you know, shot or whatever. I haven't put that extra shot in, but then you know, yeah. I, I like it in a you know, like a caramel latte, right? So I like the okay, sweetness yeah. as well as then the real you know, that you brute know, dirty right. brute. Yeah, I like that double combination. So at home yeah. we make a uh, golly, I can't ever remember the name, but if anybody's going through the store and you see that big yellow uh package, that's what we get. It's Busco or something. I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's really, really dark. Uh, it's a, it's, it's just, it's dark. It's nutty. It's dirty. It's okay. Dirty. Yeah. That's what you I, know, I, I and I'll, I'll mix in. I'll steam up my milk out of yeah. the espresso machine and then pour in nice. some. I use the uh, Starbucks creamer because okay. I was looking at all the different creamers one day and I yeah. was just, you know, what I was trying to try something new. And I made the mistake of turning them around and looking what's in them. <laughs> holy shit man that'll freak you out and i got to the starbucks one and it was like five or six things and most of them i can understand so i was like hey like, yeah, yeah yeah i'll take the one i can understand <laughs> yeah you not know. The one with like 50 million things that you have oh, no idea geez, what it is so well, much well, yeah just brutal just the lighting here brutal so yeah that's that's what i do but yeah i i haven't really ever done it's funny I, as i was pouring a little bit of vodka into my coffee i i go hmm that's that brings back memories of a time I probably shouldn't have been drinking coffee and vodka together, but, uh, Hey, you know, vodka really does keep you warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you're out cold <laughs> at night and you need to, you need to stay warm. Vodka is pretty good. And if you need to stay yep. awake, coffee's even better. <laughs> uh, Put those two uh, together. <laughs> multiple times I had, uh, <laughs> I had valet services. And so I, I don't want to openly admit that I was drinking and driving cars. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I was the guy that was taking the keys and giving the keys and I was running the kiosk, right? Like yeah, that's yeah. really what I enjoyed. Cause you could put the little heater on, you could just sit there and drink and 
have fun with customers and i really didn't ever touch much many but you know sometimes sometimes you had to go run yeah. and grab a car so you know it is yeah, what yeah. it is <laughs> this is back in the day though back in the day i, I had a lot yeah, of fun yeah. with our valet services you know we tried to clean cars while we were doing it and later we actually put in a, a valet service at at a couple malls and used Ooh. our uh, our waterless uh technology to to clean cars while people were shopping so yeah yeah nice. i'm a big fan of valet services uh so yeah it brought me some memories back of standing out in the cold and needing a little vodka to uh <laughs> yeah yeah get through the night yeah exactly hey how did you get in the malls oh those were fucking brutal i mean you, yeah. you just walk in i mean there's management service management service. okay yeah you, you know, gotta go young, through all that. uh made some mistakes uh you know a lot of stuff that we needed in the to make it successful they kept telling us they'll do it on a local level, but we didn't have to put it in the overall contract with the, the national company. Okay. Yeah. And how did that, how did that like go? I said, I was young. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, once it came yeah. due and starting to run the business and not seeing all the stuff that they promised, it really impacted us. Fortunately, yeah. we had two malls, one kept the other afloat <laughs> uh, yeah, the one yeah, that yeah. they did all the stuff signage and all the stuff that they promised us front row parkings and all that shit got pushed away and it wasn't in the contract and it was just a brute it was like they only wanted to collect their money and it was like god damn it yeah. guys like this had a lot of great hope a lot of great things for your people for people coming in the mall and yeah they you know you yeah. never want to say somebody fucked you but you know when it happens when you get yeah. fucked, you, you get know, fucked. like it's, it's yeah. hard. It's still our fault that the business had to close. You know, we're still the ones that had to pull that trigger, but you know, it, it, it's but those uh, hurdles, you those know, those hurdles just got yeah. too big. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's one thing I, I've always wondered, you know, cause I I've seen, uh, there was two guys I knew they're, they're actual, uh, Orbis X members. And I was talking with one of the guys recently, cause they're in a mall, uh, well, okay. outside the mall, uh, but they're, that's their only presence. And so I was talking to him. I reached out because I said, I want some feedback on like why and how you're using Orbis X. Because for me, it seemed like these are like one-offs. Like, what are you going to market to some guy and tell him to come back to the mall? You know what I mean? And he's, and you actually he said, be yeah. surprised. That's, that's, that's really said. all we ended up having. Yeah. We rarely got any new people. It just was the same, which is good, right? It was the same people yeah. who are just coming back to use the service because they could get a, a valet and they could get their car clean. Like, they loved it. And some of those people actually continued after we closed our doors, we just mm -hmm. went and serviced them. You know, we just threw them into our mobile unit, you know, and we would yeah. go service in mobile. So Absolutely. Yeah. And so the, the, the guy told me, and so I was asking him some stats on like his customers and stuff like that. Cause I wanted to see if there was specific tools that maybe someone in his situation needs. And then, Hey, we could roll that out across the country for anyone else in his, his similar situation. Right. And uh, the funny thing is, he told me the majority of his customers are are male. I, I figured it would have been more even split or something like that. I just figured, you know, the mall, you know, like my wife goes to the mall, stuff like that. Uh, he told me, you know, predominantly, you know, male. Um, and he said that the reason that they liked the service was that if their wife wanted to go shopping or something, they would go with them. But then there was a finite time. It wasn't like they're going to be at the fucking mall for eight hours. It was, we'll be at the mall until the car is clean. <laughs> And then we're gone. And so he said they liked it because they get a text on their phone when the job's done, you know, and then they're like, oh, sweetie, hey, we got to go. We got to go. <laughs> exactly. Smart. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. So that's that's kind of how he's been like pitching it to people. He's like, you know, get get your crucial shopping done, you know, and then get the fuck out. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I was asking him same questions like, how'd you get in the mall? How'd you get started with that? And then, uh, cause I, I see a lot of these, you know, posts where people are dead or something like that in the winter time, they can't get a garage and stuff like that. And it's like, well, you know, there are malls out there that have, you know, garages that <laughs> you can go and uh, be a part of that whole situation. Um, so it just seemed to me like if you can't get a garage space, that might be the next best thing is just use that to, even if you just stay afloat during the winter, at least yeah, you're not. Or being, you know. if you can't get into malls going to want to charge you. Oh, so for sure. Yeah. They're going to want to charge you. Some people that don't are office complexes. If you have an office complex, you have those big towers and they have, you know, garages where people park their cars. Yeah. Those yeah. Those people don't charge. They love it as a service, right? They're a management company. So you could go in and, and really talk to them about the customer service and, 
the you know the camaraderie of people get the car cleaned while they're at work like it it does you know, that's a big we still have a guy that he used to work for me and he's still and we helped him get into a, a bay and really helped him work and i'd send him a bunch of stuff Dude. and really helped him get started and uh, he's still rolling out of there it's if you can find one of those it's they're good little little money holes they're good nice little, little yeah nice little there. cash cow yeah mm -hmm. and, and you got to think too for from an employer perspective like let's say i'm one of the people you know leasing one of the floors or something like that um you can you can do some great incentives for you know when your sales guys hit targets or something like that you can be like hey you know you won you know sure. x detail package yeah. or something right so and that's something yeah. to, to sell to the management company because you got to get past the management company first that's that's the yeah. hurdle and once you yeah, pass the management true. company, yeah, then there's all kinds of ways you can help market to everybody else. You're right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that's where, so, so those are key things. And we're in that time right now. There's a lot of guys that are slowing down, winding down. They're looking to reopen in March, April kind of thing. So these are alternatives you can look at. There's, there's opportunities there. There's no shortage. Excuse me. The work is there. The money's there. You, you can find it. Got to put on the thinking cap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you got to go yeah. hunt, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody's used to hunting. Sometimes you got to go true. hunt. Sometimes you, <laughs> sometimes you got to yeah. take a whole week and when you, you just, you're hunting. That's all you're doing is hunting. Listen, right now, it, everybody here in the Midwest is tree stands. They're getting up early. They're mm. going out to the stands for a little bit. Then they're going into work. And then they're, I mean, every weekend, everybody, all I'm doing is hunting, right? Like there's a time that sometimes you just got to go hunt, right? You just got to go take the time. You consider it wasting I, get, I hope it's not a waste if you're hunting, but you know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you, you should be out. If you're yeah. slow, you should be out hunting and planning. You know, there's, we're, that's a big thing of what we're doing here at headquarters. I mean, we're, we're hunting for what's going to be, what we're going to be doing over the next, you know, January, February in our coldest of winter, you know, we're planning yeah. now for those moments. Right. So, and a big thing that we're doing is that's we're going to build out a, a YouTube channel. You know, Beauty, yeah. I, I did one back in 2011. I think I've told you about it. And then I, I sold mm. it and never really built another one. Uh, so we're excited about building. So right now, you know, we just finished an acid wash in the bay. Uh, we did a stripper last week and got, you know, have you ever used one of those, those concrete strippers? Like you're standing by it yeah. and it's got this and it's real, man, that's brutal. But yeah. Yeah. five or six hours we finally got it down and now we're acid washing we'll get it stained uh i think at the end of the week and Dude. We're, we're moving ahead yeah we're excited about it. electrician on, comes in with some lighting and yeah we're planning on and listen i got a it's going to take time you know we're investing in we're for stuff that we don't even know right we're just hoping that in a couple you don't know of months, the outcome yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but uh but you got to shoot your shot and you're, you're going to shoot your shot yeah that's that's what it is yeah, yeah. And, and what I've always learned is that even on the, you know, hunting ventures where you might go out and you don't, you know, bag a deer, for example, you're still going to become a better hunter in some way, the more that you spend time hunting, right? It's like anything you do, the more you do it, you're going to improve in little subtle ways. And uh, I think that it's important for people not to go hunting only in crisis moments. Uh, that's where I feel that a lot of people waste their marketing budget is they're not doing things consistently and they're not planning them out. Like how you're talking about, you know, you're looking ahead and planning out, okay, take this time right now. What are we going to do to, you know, fill those gaps? How are we going to, you know, drive traffic here? What do we do once we have the traffic? It's all those steps that we've talked about in, you know, how to build a funnel, why to build a funnel. We've talked about that many times. And I think that a lot of people try and, you know, like, it's like cramming for a test. They wait till the night before and then they're like, oh shit. And then they try and build this super funnel overnight and you've done very little planning, very little research. You don't even know, even if your ad was super successful, you don't even know what to do with the people that do come in. You're not following up with them or maybe the follow-ups are just, you know, not well put together because you, you tried to cram it in. So yeah, you got to be hunting all year long, I think. And then uh, you just, if you have some downtime, that's when you go hunting a little more, you know? And so, yeah, that's, uh, fuck, I feel like I'm giving away a tip. Yeah, you, you already <laughs> put it in, did you? Jesus. Oh, man. So You seen anything funny online recently? <laughs> I haven't seen any funny, but as a post that I thought it'd be interesting, I, I think you'll enjoy the conversation right. back and forth. Uh, is Dustin Stanley. Dustin, uh, it's cool. He's a guy inside of our community, uh, really? at the hyper clean group, but he's also, uh, he listens to this episode. He, he likes it. He likes our episode. He likes to, you know, what we talk about. And, uh, he, so I, I said, you know what, I'm going to, 
I'm going to talk about a post that he put up inside of the hyperclean specialist group. Uh, I think you're in it. You know, a lot of people are, yeah. are moving over into it and they're experiencing what hyperclean is all, is about. And it, we're a different company than everybody else. And uh, he, he asked a question about gift certificates, right? Mm-hmm. Now a lot of people are pushing forward. Hey, it's gift certificate time. You know, let's get some gift certificates. You can, and it was what a lot of people will say, right? Like, was it, 20% or 30% or something, you know, there's all this percentage of people that won't ever use your gift certificate. So it's just free money, right? Like, yeah. I think that's what a lot of people say with gift certificates. So I want to toss back and forth this idea because the other thing that he was saying in his post is what type of people does it attract? It, mm. If somebody, a let's just go in through some of the, the, the theories of it, right? If somebody's willing to, you know, let their car go enough to when they can get a deal on a gift certificate, is that really the car you want to clean? The customer you want, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, if if you're the type of business that loves taking free stuff from people, is that really the you're type gonna, of business that you? Yeah. Reach? You know, like there is a <laughs> What's theory your mission of purpose. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, yeah. oh yeah, do it because people are going to give me free money. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. That's all great and all right. Everybody loved free money from the government in 2020, but now they're in a place where they, you know, they don't understand. Quick wins never last. Yeah, yeah. It's that whole, you know, <laughs> yeah. teach somebody to fish or, you know, just give them fish, right? Like, yeah. you just get free shit. Like, you know, you're not really doing it, right? It's just not yeah. really that beneficial to you. But, you know, his big deal was, and he made a post and it had a really nasty car in it. And you know, it's like, this is why I don't do gift certificates because, you know, it's <laughs> the other part too, is maybe somebody will buy it for somebody that knows they need it, but they know that that person isn't going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's the type of car he got right. Trashed yeah. out. And his yeah. point, which is a very valid point, like, this is why I don't like do it. So then other people toss back and forth inside the comment section, which is what we love like, we're big inside of our group, not just telling people things, right? Like, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you love those either. blowhards, right? Like in, in these groups, people just want to hop on to, I'm going to keyboard to tell you how great I am, right? We're not yeah. big on that. We're big on asking questions and having people do dialogue and conversation back and forth, open opinions type of deal. And one of the opinions 100%. that that was in there was, was interesting, right? It's, you know, how, <laughs> why would you, you know, do you then if somebody you know buys a gift, say a gift certificate, let's just say a hundred bucks, right? Let's just throw that number yeah. out there. But you get this trashed vehicle in, you know, it, <laughs> you're just supposed to do the work for the hundred bucks that you took or, mm. you know, somebody then has to, shouldn't somebody then also have to pay for more because they sent in a trash, vehicle, right? So then it creates this whole for other sure. dilemma and I just thought it was a very fascinating, interesting post because it can spurn a lot of people to think differently or, or ask questions about stuff. Uh, you know, so what overall, what's your thoughts, you know, gift certificates in line? I know you do them and you're a big fan of them, yeah. but you know, what about the type of people? What about the extra work? You know, how do you charge extra? Is it worth gift certificates? What do you, what's your thought? hundred percent. Yeah, no. And great question. And great post. Uh, seriously. Uh, I, I love gift certificates, but I treat gift certificates differently. And I think the, at the end of the day, you hit the nail on the head in a way where you have to look at who your end customer is going to be. And so what we realize is a gift certificate usually is being given to a complete stranger. So I, I look at that as similarly, if we're running Facebook ads, we're not doing any retargeting for existing customers or someone that's been to our website before, stuff like that. Literally, it's a cold lead. That person is a complete stranger to our business. We don't know what we're going to get. Uh, it's a percentage game. It's a numbers game because we, we've had people come in with the same thing, trashed vehicle. Uh, but the first thing we do is we go through with them and we say, listen, you know, we've got this, this, this as our levels. We have one, two, and three. Your car right now is sitting at level three. This thing's a disaster. So this is what it's going to cost you. Your gift certificate is valued at this. And then we make them an offer that it, if you want, you can pay the extra and get that done. Or we can clean it as if it was a level one or two, but we manage their expectations of what they're going to get, so on and so forth. For us, it just opens up a dialogue with the customer. And at the end of the day, we got money was tendered, but that money can also be given back. 
Um, so if if they're not down for it or whatever, we just don't take the work. We're not going to take a loss on it. That's absolutely not the case. I've seen people do gift certificates in the wrong way, in my opinion, where they offer it for a package or something like that, where instead of just a fixed denomination, they want to focus on, you know, oh, well, you get the, the lightning package or some damn thing. And then they come in and they're expecting well, so here's like, I'm, I'm glad you said that because here's a conversation that goes on, right? Like pick up the phone. Hi, you guys have gift certificates. Oh yeah, we do. Okay. I'd like to get one for a full detail. Yeah. So it then instead a- of saying, okay, well that's going to be, you need a gift certificate for a full detail and they write on full detail. Basically you're saying only have gift certificates in the, in, in value of money, yes. not value 100%. of what a, uh, a package is. So, 100%. You know, Hey, yeah, no problem. We got gift certificates ranging from a hundred to 200 to $300. Uh, Absolutely. Wh- which value do you want to choose? Yeah. The other question is some people then have, well, is there a deal? Yeah. Right? Should you give up, should you give a 20%, you know, should you run that type of special during Christmas, you know, save 20% on a gift certificate, uh, if I go to old Navy, they don't give me a percentage no. off of, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, and just because I, I buy a gift certificate. Yeah. I've seen this a lot and I'm not a fan of it. Uh, so it's something that's being built into Orbis X right now because some people do want to do that. And I'm not here to tell people how to run their business if that's what you want to do. But I will say, I strongly recommend you put a fixed denomination value on it and you don't offer a bonus, like, you know, buy this and get that. Um, unless you're going to do it in the way of maybe products or something like that, uh, because them spending more and giving you more isn't, it's not going to lead to the outcome that you think in most cases, I would, I would argue. And so for us, for example, if someone does something, we'll offer like maybe a, a glass coating or we'll do the, you know, the sun strip, the tint at the top, we're usually using scraps that we have left over for that anyways. So it's, it's not really costing us anything. It takes five minutes to put it in. Um, but there's, I would, I would more give away a service that you have and not a full service, but I mean, just like, if you do want to do a bonus of some kind, I would incentivize that way. Like we talked about glass coating or, you know, put on hyperclean glass, something like that, you know, hundred percent. And that would be a a perfect example. Exactly. We could be like, you know, yeah, we'll coat your glass and one of your bottles of glass coating. Oh my God. How many vehicles can you do with that? Jesus. Like you, you're giving away 14 cents. You know what I mean? So that's a lot better than saying, oh, if you, you know, spend $250, we're going to give you an extra 50 bucks or something. Now you're giving away $50 instead of 14 cents. Economically, it just doesn't make sense. And it's also not really increasing the value of what the customer's getting because an extra $50, what does that mean? Like they, they, there's no value associated for the customer for what you're actually providing. Uh, that's why a lot of these, you know, big companies, they give free things away. You go buy a case of beer and they're like, uh, yeah, it includes little headphones or something like that. They, they're they not going to be like, yeah, we threw an extra beer in there for you. Actually, maybe that would not be a bad one. But there, you know, there, there's different ways of approaching gift certificates that can, can really boost your business. But you do have to understand the end customer you're getting is most likely going to be a stranger. Now, the reason that I would never not do gift certificates is because there are ways of managing the end result for both your business and with the customer as well, uh, because you're in the driver's seat. We turn down work all the time. So I, we would happily just be like, listen, unfortunately your car is a disaster. There's nothing we can do. That's going to make you happy within that gift certificate budget. So if you want, we'll convert it to a gas card you can use it to fill up your vehicle. We can refund the money. Or like I said, you can apply it to the you know, total purchase price, which is going to be X to get your vehicle to a point where you're going to be happy with it because we don't want to put out subpar work. And usually when you have that conversation with people, you explain it to them, they they get it. And, you know, they know the condition of their vehicle. And if they truly aren't the customer that you wanted, well, you're saving yourself anyways, even if they did get mildly upset, you know, it's you it turn them down because that's not the demographic you want to go after anyways. Uh, but we've often had times where you know, we've always seen a husband consistently. We've seen him, we've seen him, we've seen him. His wife's never come in. Christmas rolls around, he gets her a gift card. She comes in and next thing you know, now we're doing both vehicles forever. So there's there's times where it, it just makes sense. Um, I do want to touch on real quick, the not redeeming part. Um, I think that that is a huge, it, you're right. It says a lot about the actual company in terms of just 
yourself, like what you're putting out there. It's it's the equivalent of when I've seen posts where people will be like, charge this guy, you know, four thousand dollars for the day and only worked on his vehicle for two hours, you know, and they're like ball in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, like what is wrong with you, man? Like it's don't get me wrong. I'm a big believer in, you know, it, like what I charge people per hour for my consulting stuff is, you know, astronomical to some people in comparison to others. But my experience that's coming with that, you know, I'm, I'm basically charging you for the 20 years of experience, not for the 20 minutes we're on the phone. And so there's there's a difference there. But in our industry right now, you might have 20 years of experience. That's great. But you have to also look at what you're actually providing for the customer. And so I think that what the point I'm getting to is with gift cards, taking free money, it actually says a lot more about your company. And I think it's going to steer you in the wrong direction. What you should do instead is take that as an opportunity to call those people and say, Hey, why aren't you coming in and find out why they're not using your service? Because that's a potential person that literally could come in for free technically, because they got this gift card and they're still not coming in to use your service. That's an opportunity to call them and find out. And what we do, we take the approach that if you're truly not going to use it, we would like you to at at least just come in, you know, drop off the gift card. We can give you back the money and we're going to donate it on your behalf to one of the three charities that we work with. So we'll make a statement like that. Our whole goal is to try and get them in. If they can get in, we can start doing some talking with them and maybe get them to use a gift card and find out more about them. So we can either A, learn why they weren't taking an interest in our business um, or B, convert them to actually take advantage of it, upsell them different things and and market off as redeemed. So I think that a a good strategy, instead of just saying, yay, free money is follow up with the the people that haven't redeemed and figure out what's going on. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's my, my 50 word essay on how I feel about gift cards. (laughs) But yeah, I think, but I I think it is good to to definitely offer them. Uh, But you, you know, Dustin's right. You are going to get some people that come in and it's going to be exactly that. It's going to be a shit show. And, but being prepared for that, you know, like I said, you're in the driver's seat. You can always turn it down, but, uh, but yeah. How about you, Marty? What are your, what are your thoughts on the gift cards? Uh, yeah, I didn't, I mean, never was it. Yeah. I didn't, whatever. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't, it never was a big thing for me. I don't know. I mean, oh, when okay. I had my car wash, people would do it, but we I've never been a, a big pusher of gift certificates or gift cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, hey, not well, that I have anything against them, right? Like, I just... For sure, yeah. It's just always and, like, eh, I don't know. Like, I know what you mean, and on that note, I think the one thing is that sometimes people stop their other marketing in place of gift cards. So holidays come around, and they stop doing their regular marketing, and they switch to now marketing gift cards. And gift cards are great, I think, but they do come with other issues, other problems, things like that. Um, you shouldn't ever stop your existing marketing. And that's what I find happens a lot is when people go, like, oh, gift card season. And now everything they do is just gift card, gift card, gift card, but they're not doing anything for you know their, their regular ads or the regular promos. And what they should be pushing more is being like, yeah, we have gift cards available, but we've got this package or this thing on, you know, going on right now, we can do this or this and, and try and get some, some jobs. My business has always been maintenance. I mean, once Uh, I grew it up and we had our set, cause really the way I I trajected my mobile business was once it started going, like we just went back to the same office complexes, the same uh, neighborhoods. Like, I mean, it just kind of start to Mm. ran. Like it just, we didn't, we didn't need gift certificates. Every once in a while, somebody would ask for one, but I just, I never, you know, and then it was too much work, right? This was back in the day. So you had to go to Kinko's. Oh, you had to. It to wasn't go, like now had, where it's all digital. No, yeah. yeah. So it just yeah. took a lot of work, right? Like computers were, I mean, my computer was massive, right? Like yeah, yeah. big thing. It would fucking take, like, it just, it was hard to work on, I, you know? So I just, yeah. I never got into it. Yeah. Never have. No, fair enough. Yeah. And that's where uh, I think, uh, so what do you guys do usually around the holidays for hyperclean, for example? Do you do more just you focus on pushing just the products itself, acquiring new customers that way, or do you mix in something where, uh, you, as you mentioned, you're not doing gift cards per yeah, se? Yeah, I mean we don't. There, I think there's one on the side. I think we've sold like two or three. Like I mean, okay, we just yeah. we just don't push it. We've never been big on gift cards. Just and I think that's just be a not ever too, in. Right? Yeah. Yeah, like imagine, like I don't, I don't see, you know, like okay, let's say I'm I'm detailer John, and my my wife, she's not going to go to your site and buy me a gift card, 
You know what I mean? Because she, she probably usually won't what we what we've done is we rolled out combos, right? Kits. Okay. So, yeah. You know, if somebody wants to to grab a starter kit to put under the tree, or you know, hey, you know, so and so likes to clean their cars. You know, here's a little starter pack that you can put in their stockings, right? Like, and those yeah, are yeah. perfect. That's that's really where we we like, right? So, you know, it's it does give a little bit better deal, small little percentage off because it's bought together. But we really find kits, uh, you know, our distributors are having really good luck with that right now. For the people that have questioned and wondered, you know, hey, I got a little showroom or I got a little place, a little lobby where people could come in. Yeah, I mean, HyperClean Slick, HyperClean Spray Coat. Everybody loves sprays. Put those out there. And that's mm -hmm. a great time now to you could do that and have that be a stocking stuffer or a little present under sure. the tree. And listen, every person we give our glass cleaner to loves it. Yeah. Every single person loves it so well, i've got it you want on my something to right give now. away to your customers <laughs> put some glass cleaner out there for yeah. them they love our glass cleaner that's true yeah and uh you know it's so here's here's my thoughts around it because we offer gift cards just because we get asked for them during the holidays and we do sell them so you know it's just kind of part of the business for us um but we do a lot more alternative type of promotions around the holidays um so that's just it's one of the things we do when it comes to gift cards. Uh, but the bigger things we do is to make sure that we stay booked. And if we've even had the, the one guy that drives around, he services all the dealerships, everything. And he stops by our shop off and uh, he, he drops them off all those like, uh, you know, big, 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 massive drums of, you know, product at the dealerships. He's been there 30 years or something like that now. And he told me he's never seen a shop in Canada as busy as this in the winter. And that's a very important factor because in winter here, it's a lot different than a lot of places, you know? And so it's, it's hard to stay busy. Um, and he's like, how, how have you managed to do this? And it's because we, we don't stick to just one thing. It's not just gift cards or it's not just these, you know, this promo or that promo or whatever. We're constantly hammering the market and making sure we're just everywhere. And one thing that we do that works really well instead of doing, you know, promotions for gift cards is, you know, with bonuses, like, oh, buy $50 and get an extra 50. We don't do that stuff. What we do instead is we say, book your job now and we'll donate $5 or a meal to our local food bank. And so we do stuff like that. And it, it doesn't cost much. You can even put together a little, you go to the grocery store or Costco or something, you buy some stuff, put together little, uh, you know, bags of non-perishable food items, and you can, you know, use it for your social media, take pictures of it and stuff. We're actually queuing up a campaign that's launching on Thursday for this. And uh, basically you put together these little bags and you can get maybe, you know, 20, 30 of them it doesn't have to be too crazy. And then you say, you know, every appointment booked, one of these is going to be donated on your behalf. You know what I mean? And so then it, little things like that, I found were better ways of, you know, pushing things out. And you're going to get someone that's actually coming in to use your service today. And so if you do maintenance plans, for example, Marty, that would be perfect. You could say, you know, fuck, here I go again, man. <laughs> Speaking of tips, let's get on to a tip. Yeah, yeah, let's get on to the tips because I just, oh my God. All right, what do you got for us? <laughs> All right, so for me, I'm... I'm a big fan. I've always had uh, my first truck was a manual uh, in college and had a rodeo. That was a manual. Uh, my Jeep is a manual. I specifically bought it and it was difficult to find. Even back then, it was difficult to find. I can't imagine today trying to find a brand new Jeep that is a manual. <laughs> but oof, I, I just I love I love that type of feel on a vehicle. Right. Like. Mm. And then you mentioned, and I've heard it too, and, you know, a lot of people questioning right now, you know, some of the past choices of going with the, the type of ceramic coating that they went with, you know, they're slow now, uh, questioning, you know, how many layers, you know, how much time it takes, the, the price that they're having to pay. There's a lot of question marks, right? So if you got a question mark because, you know, hey, you, you, those of us that drive a, a, a manual transmission, we know that. You eventually, those RPMs, right? They just hit a point <laughs> and you, yeah. you hit your point and it's time to what? Time to press the clutch, change the gear, let the clutch back out and give it some gas, right? Maybe that's time for you. You, you might've been headed in one direction, but now you're slow. Now you're starting to see these other brands that, that have ceramic coatings and they were so, John, this is what's hilarious, right? Anybody that's known me over the past years 
knows I've heavily talked about the brands that have preached layers and layers and layers and big tickets and layers. Nobody right now today in today's market, in today's time is ever talking about big tickets and layers, right? It's time to put the clutch in, shift gears and give it some gas. And you need to give it some gas on HyperClean, Uno, Dose and Trey. They're mm. killing it for people. The amount of people that have started coming into our specialist group and they've, they've been with somebody else. They can't believe how user-friendly the application is, the instant gratification of slickness. And they go, I only have to put on one layer? Like, I mean, mm. they are blown away still, even inside our specialist group. Hey, Dose was great. You know, do I put on a second layer? Everybody in the comment section, no, <laughs> you don't need like, this is what's awesome, right? Inside the yeah. group, people understand. No, you don't need a second layer. You've been taught wrong by these other people. You don't need that. One layer, press the gas and go. Get as many people in servicing with a one, two year, three year coding, Uno, Dose and Trey. Run your, your analytics on how much it's going to cost you, how little time it's going to take. And you can now start putting, putting together a package for your customers that meets their demands, gives them great quality of a product, better user experience for them, and at a much better rate, right? So when it's a much better rate for the end user, the end customer, that means your pockets will get fatter, you'll grow more, you'll be able to press the gas more because, hey, ours is at a great value to you. You don't have a lot of expense into it. You pass that on and you can start seeing in a time where many people are starting to crash and like you said, complain and having issues. You can actually shift gears going with HyperClean, Uno, Dose or Trey, shift gears and press the gas and you'll see great outcomes of your business. 100%, yeah. No, it's true. And it, it's funny, that's something we've done at our company at Auto World uh, consistently is that we we take a look at how we're doing things. And when we jump into something first, it's clunky. It's always clunky for us at first. Uh, so like when we first got into PPF, when we first got into windshield replacements, all these things, uh, because it's it's a learning curve for us, adding a new service with, with our staff, with the, you know, explaining it to the customers and the, the process as well, the stuff in the middle, getting the actual work done. But then we always take a look at the industry as a whole, take a look at what's out there, what other people are doing, and we, we pay attention to how things are shifting. And what we're looking for is that competitive edge. Whereas I find a lot of people, and this is going to kind of lead into my tip for today, is that a lot of people um, tend to just follow the trends, but then they stick with the trend even after the trend is no longer profitable for their business, right? And it's that that whole, uh, you know, they're they're seeking this you know, being told they have to have the car looking perfect and it's got to be this and that. And you got to, you know, oh, you, you're only doing a one step shame on you, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but perfection kills profits a hundred percent. And what you need to do is focus more on perfecting your internal business processes. And that's where shifting gears is, is crucial to that. Absolutely. Um, so uh, we've done that. We uh, prior to, you know, when we first started doing coatings, we were doing the, the whole thing that everybody else, you know, told us we had to do. And then we've we've shifted and pivoted and made sure that we could get ahead of things. And how can we do this cheaper for the customer? How can we do this faster for ourselves, but also for the customer? But how can we do that while providing the same or better value? And that's where, you know, we've been extremely happy. And so then thanks to your shipments, for example, um, that's that's been really great for our customers. They're really happy with the end result. They're getting something that used to be, you know, multi-steps it used to be this and that we used to have to push on them like oh you know we have to do this and then afterwards you know you can't do this with your vehicle or that with your vehicle or else you know your warranty's fucked and it's it's a shit show you know and so uh, we've been able to transform our side of things and it's been a lot more profitable for us uh, but then at the same time too for the customer they're they're happy and that's that's the end of it for us is if the customer's happy um so that's my tip for today is paying attention to your customer's feedback. Um, there's two times that a customer is going to tell you what your business is. And it's important for you to know what your business is because you're, whoever, whatever customers are coming to you where you're getting your money, that's what your business is and that's what your business is doing, right? So when you're first talking to the customer, 
that's where they're going to tell you things and paying attention to the language they use. You know, if they're talking about something and they're like, oh, you know, I parked my car underneath this tree by my neighbor's house. It drives me nuts. Like, you know, it's always getting covered in this or that. Like paying attention to the things that they're saying, that's what they're going to tell you what kind of customer they are. And then based on the solution that you're providing, that's going to be, you know, your demographic now and you need to go after that. All the stuff in the middle doesn't doesn't really matter. There's so much fog that's there. It's hard for you to see what's actually, you know, impacting that customer coming back or that customer staying with you and stuff because they don't know all the process that goes on in the middle. And at the same time, uh, it's it's really difficult to pinpoint what kind of customer you're getting based on your process, but they, they're going to tell you in the beginning. And then in the end, when the work is done and the result is there, that's where they're also going to tell you based on their feedback, if you met their expectations. And that's, if you didn't, that's where you have to go modify your process, but you really need to pay attention to those two endpoints and touch points with a, a customer when they first come in and they're excited about getting whatever it is done or explaining their problem. And then the end part as well, that's where you can easily identify what kind of customers you have and how you can get more of those type of customers. Or if you need to ditch those customers, now you've identified what you don't need. Um, but the whole thing is the reason that that part's important is because if you haven't met their expectation, you're going to have to modify your process. And so that's what we've done where we were taking a look at, you know, when our customers first talked to us and they told us their pain points when they were coming in for ceramic coatings. And we realized that the end point the products and the process that we were doing wasn't getting us there. It was, it, they were happy, but they weren't over the moon. It wasn't meeting the expectation that we were hoping for as a company. So we started taking a look at the, the processes in between and identifying, okay, we're not getting exactly the, we're getting, you know, hitting the nail on the head for detailing. We're getting the customers we want. PPF, getting the customers we want. Windshield replacement, getting the customers we want. Ceramic coatings, we were kind of hitting this stumbling block, trying to find out, you know, what customers, so we were analyzing things and looking at both ends when they were first talking was, what are they actually saying? Why do they want that? And the biggest problem I see in the industry is that a lot of detailers are selling products or services instead of solutions, but customers don't buy products or services. They're buying solutions to their problem. So you have to really hone in, pay attention to what they're telling you at both of those points. And then you'll be able to figure out if you're able to meet that solution, because as long as you're selling the solution, uh, your business is going to grow and grow and grow and grow, and you'll have an endless supply of customers because you'll know exactly who to target for those solutions. Yeah, that's my tip for today. Cool. Yeah. See, just a tip. I mean, I kind of put in two other tips earlier, but, you know, I, uh, <laughs> it's the double tip episode, remember? <laughs> mm. But, yeah, so great post there by Dustin as well. That was that was really good, uh, you know, feedback about gift cards and stuff. So holiday season, uh, guys, I recommend having gift cards personally in part of your business, um, but, you know, proceed with caution and bear in mind that you may not get, uh, there's going to be some issues that you, you will have to overcome as your business. And uh, and also um, take Marty's advice and definitely some great stocking stuffers for sure are going to be some glass coatings. And that should definitely be part of all your upsell processes anyways, uh, because uh, glass coatings are, are just huge for me. Like how much, how much glass is on the average vehicle? My God. And you can coat them all. You can charge for each one if you want to. Like for me, I just see that as a massive upsell. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why yeah. people are... stocking yeah. stuffer though. Get glass cleaner. Everybody oh, glass loves cleaner. our glass cleaner. Our glass oh. cleaner is phenomenal. Yeah. Okay, that one I haven't tested. They tested it at the shop. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance yet. Oof, I'm jealous now. I'm There's supposed to go there Thursday though, so yeah. that's going to be. Uh, and, and it's it's about time too because mm -hmm. uh, the inside of my my daughter was sitting in the front seat recently, and she took her shoe off, and then she put her foot right on the thing. And I know I can clean it. It's going to take me 10 seconds, but I know I'm going to the shop this week. So I'm just going to have them try it out. But uh, that drives me nuts when there's like it, her side. Hey, Sean, you better. I sent you a glass towel too. So I know our glass cleaner and the perfect glass towel. You better goddamn use that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm testing it out this Thursday. They, they've wow. already used it. I have, I have gotten feedback about it and the feedback was great. But I, I, I like to see things myself as mm -hmm. well. So I'm definitely going to check that out too. Um, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna Absolutely. make a trip up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you should, anyways. You know, but Ding. yeah, you're, you're you're gonna need some uh, some vodka though, because it's how it's big a boy chill. are you? I'm gonna pack yeah. a lunch. Come up there, take all day. Take all day. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> all right, I'll test it out. I'll give you some feedback <laughs> too, and uh, maybe I'll do a little video and uh, and stuff like that at the shop as well. I've been playing with these video editing things because we're getting our Instagram going and all that jazz. So. 
but uh yeah awesome all right so stocking stuffer number one would be uh some glass cleaner i still recommend the glass coating uh, <laughs> personally <laughs> i'm just saying i've got it on my stocking truck. stuffer could be which we're talking about the the next episode on the pines polishing podcast is a community pub that we'll release on thursday and then we recorded it last week and we heavily talked about and this is everybody go listen to the episode but uh, you know, if, if you're looking for something to do here in the winter and you mentioned, let's just go and throw this out before we leave, we got to sign off of here, but yeah. using hyper clean glass ceramic coating and coating glass showers. Mm. I mean, yeah. they're, they're having a great results. People are thrilled. It's a go listen to the episode. Cause we talk about different ways that you can market it, how you can go in and talk to people, ways you can use it. And so, yeah, and that's another, great- you know. Definitely what a great way to stay busy during the winter too, huh? Yep. Go ahead yeah. and code people showers. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm checking that episode out like right now. <laughs> Not even kidding with you. <laughs> All right, let's sign off. I gotta listen to it. <laughs> Thanks again for your time, Marty. We'll see you next Tuesday. All right, All man. Right, brother. Stay safe. Cheers.